Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is NVIDIA's 9800GX2, a dual GPU video card that I picked up for just 25 British pounds. Now back in the day, 2008, this would have cost its original owner 666 US dollars. Question is, does this one still work? What's it capable of in 2018? And how does it handle itself in a few SLI compatible titles? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's get it in the system and see what this ancient beast can do. So, the 9800GX2 features two G92 based graphics cards stuck together. Literally, I'm not kidding. Unlike more modern dual GPU cards that we've tested in the past, whereby they feature two GPUs on a single board, the 9800 here takes what are essentially two 8800 GTSs and faces them towards each other with a fan in between for cooling. All of this is enclosed within a fantastic looking shiny black plastic casing. Spec wise we've got a total of 256 stream processors, 1 gig of GDDR3 memory and a core clock of 600 megahertz which comes together as part of a 197 watt package. Back in 2008 this thing would have offered beastly performance but today things proved a little disastrous. Before we get into that though, here's the test system. It looks old, right? Well, inside this case we've got my Ryzen 5 1600 and 8GB of DDR4 RAM. I've had to move things into this temporary enclosure as the USB ports on my main case decided to break. Funnily enough, after I installed the 9800GX2. A coincidence, I guess. In an attempt to bring back the nostalgia from my childhood, I fired up Crisis. 1080p here, with a mix of high and very high settings. Please excuse the lack of MSI Afterburner in the corner. That decided not to show up as well, but I can tell you that throughout the card or cards were running at near 100% usage most of the time. A fair experience considering the resolution. My string of bad luck didn't end there though. Halfway through the beach level on screen here, the sound disappeared from the game. One minute I heard gunfire, explosions and the sound of enemies yelling at me as they surrounded me from all angles. The next, silence. GTA 5 was also playable thanks to its DirectX 10 support. However, we did need to reduce the graphical settings here to 720p and normal. I think 900p may have been an option too and 1080p certainly let us see over 30fps in some situations, but to truly get the most out of this aging flagship, turning everything way down was certainly the best way to go. My time with this game was short lived. I attempted to storm the army base as when you do a lot of explosions and such occur, so it can be a great way to stress your hardware. Though as you can see that didn't work out well, and with that I decided to move on to Bioshock Infinite. Here I started with lower settings but then gradually worked my way up adjusting things and checking out how each preset was handled by the card. Eventually I settled for a complete mix of graphical options to average 45 FPS albeit at full HD. There were some instances of heavy stutter here and there but this was the least of my worries because it was here the card crashed the system. That's why it ended up like this for the second time today. After removing it from the system it felt very hot, yet there were no previous signs of overheating. I always replace the paste before testing. It's a great motto to live by if you're a regular on the used market. Replace the paste. So that's what I did, again. This thing has clearly gotten well accustomed to its retirement, it just does not want to work. With the paste replaced and the card reassembled, I wanted to see if we could squeeze out any more performance before it decided to die altogether. Thankfully it fired back up and I was able to test 2013's Tomb Raider again with a mix of settings 450fps at 1080p. Not bad, but just know you'll be hearing the card over the game for the most part. To wrap up this series of unfortunate events, I jumped into another older title where this thing clearly feels at home. Call of Duty Modern Warfare is an ageing classic and no match for the 9800GX2 which will make very light work of such a title. Now I loved the 8800GTS, I thought it was a fantastic single card, 
And this is also, or was also, a very cool piece of hardware. But this specific one right here, the one I've used today, just hasn't aged well. But what a fascinating bit of design though. With that said, I think this is probably the unluckiest video I've ever made. The minute this card turned up, things just started to go wrong. So, I'll either be sending it back to where it came from, or just burying it in a hole at the bottom of my garden. But, as always... <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been a look back at the once $666 9800 GX2 from NVIDIA. If you liked it, leave a like on it. If you didn't, leave a dislike on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one where hopefully we'll be testing something that hopefully doesn't cause me misfortune. So, thank you and good night.